I think a lot of people underestimate how important your number one partner is in every single deal. And for me, a lot of times I advertise that I don't have any partners, right? But I do. I've been lying. It's my banks. Banks, guys, and lenders are your best partner in every single deal. And a lot of times they're financing up to 80%, right? Uh, maybe not today anymore, but a lot of times they own a significant portion of the deal. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I do over the last decade to be able to do over $200 million, almost $250 million worth of debt with my lenders. The first thing that I like to start with, and I do this in the beginning of the year, but I also do it when I enter a new market, is I try to find through recommendations all the best lenders within that, that area, right, within that region, and then I set up meetings with them. And as you set up meetings with them, the number one thing that I start with is just getting to know them, right? Get to know them, like their background, how long they've been at the bank, what they do outside of banking, and record all that information so you can draw on that information later. That's really, really important. Next, I put together this really big financial packet. I do it at the beginning of every single year. So this is my packet for 2022. And as you can see, it's pretty thick these days but you want to share everything with them, right? You want to put together the best financial slash business information possible. So when they leave, they have a really good understanding of not just you, but also you and your business and your goals. So the first thing that I do is I take a look and I share a little bit about me, right? I have a portion in here that talks about my business career, my first 10 years and what makes me me. So you should be able to share that with them. They want to know why you've been successful or you're going to be successful. Next, I share everything that I've done in real estate. This is a little harder when you're new, but as you start to accumulate even one years of experience, you want to talk to them about that, right? So for me, I've been investing for 10 years, so I want to talk about that for a little bit. And then the last thing I want to talk to them about, I want to really get in with them into what I'm going to do over the next decade. So this you can do at any time. You could have zero real estate and still talk to them about your aspirations and your goals. And I don't like to get into how I'm gonna do it yet, but I just want them to paint a really big picture, a vision of what my real estate career is gonna look like over the next 10 years. Next thing I wanna get into is I just wanna take a little bit of time to talk to them about my financials. Where's my real estate, right? Quick little picture of what that looks like. I'm gonna even show them a map of what that looks like. I'm gonna shoot them my unit count every single year. A lot of banks wanna know, as you're looking at your portfolio, how have you scaled? So for example, if you've only bought uh, two units the last three years, and then all of a sudden you bought 30 units, they're gonna ask about the year you bought 30 units. So for me, I have a pretty consistent path of growth. Over the last three years have been a lot higher so this is my opportunity to talk to the lender about why I've been able to scale faster. And it's because the previous years I was learning and I was applying and I was building systems, which if you do all those things right, should allow you to be able to scale faster. And you get into your personal financial summary. I mean, the bank should never have to ask you for your PFS. It's something that I update every single month, but I wanna give them where I ended the year before. And then I wanna give them my global real estate summary. The global real estate summary is gonna cover things like your LLCs, your property address, cash flow, debt service credit ratio, who the lender is. I mean, this is the sheet of paper that they put together to get your loan approved. Kind of a picture of what mine looks like here. Everything and anything that I've ever done in real estate is on my global real estate summary. It's a really big piece of report and I think it's only second to your PFS. A lot of people say it's actually more important than your personal financial statement. Then I like to get into just like last year, right? What happened most recently? And I'm gonna talk about my overall income. I'm gonna talk about my cash flow and then I'm gonna talk about my expenses. I'm gonna talk about in every single one of those areas, what I'm doing to improve them, what I did well, and how I'm gonna to continue to execute on those things in 2023. I always like to show a little bit of a graph here in how I've grown my gross income, how I've grown my net income, my overall assets. I, again, I wanna paint a really big picture with them. Every year that I've been in real estate, has my net income been going up? Has my gross income been going up? And I think for this page, one of the things that I'm always excited about to tell them is, you know, anybody that's growing should increase their gross income. But what's really hard is how do you increase your net income along with your gross income? 
I've actually been able to do that five years running. I mean, think about that for a second. I'm buying value add properties, properties that are not run well, and I'm repositioning them, adding a lot of CapEx into them. So you would think that while my gross income would go up, my net income would actually take a little bit of a dip. It hasn't. Five years running, I've increased my net profit. They always ask how. The biggest way is the implementation of my systems, my management company, and us getting better at repositioning. We've been significantly better year over year over year. And then I got the benefit of my first five or six years of, of investing in real estate, having those being stabilized and running really, really well. A lot of things lenders really look at that real estate investors don't think through is if you're acquiring a lot of properties, what happened to your properties in the past? Did you forget about them? Are they still running well? Well, that's something I want to emphasize. My, the longer I've owned a property, the more profitable that property has become. And we have optimized that through really, really good management systems. So it's not just good repositioning in the first two years. It's really good operations and management after the first two years. Then every single LLC that I own, uh, that's for the underwriters, right? I put this in here. I don't talk to them about it very often. I got 78 LLCs at this point, so it takes me way too long. But I don't want there to be a question that the underwriters, the lenders, or anybody else at the bank has for me after I'm done with this presentation. It took me five years to learn this, but my first five years, lenders would be asking me questions at all random times of day. And it got super annoying. And I thought, well, hey, there's got to be a reason they're asking these. They don't have the information. If you put together a really comprehensive financial packet at the beginning of the year, guess what? They won't have to ask you those questions throughout the course of the year. The only thing they'll ask you for is your taxes, which you should give them when they're done anyway. By doing this, I eliminate an enormous amount of questions. In fact, I can't remember the last time a lender has reached out to me for anything. They have everything right away at the beginning of the year. And then through a few other things I'll talk about a little bit later, I give them the information that they would want before they're asking. Um, and if you don't know what that is right now, just pay attention. When a lender asks for something, think about why they asked for it and how you can implement a routine on your own to give it to that lender before they would ask again. So the next part of the financial plan that you want to be able to show with them is what separates you from the competition. Like what makes you different or safe for the lender to understand as you as the real estate investor? So for me, I like to take them through my core values that my company has to be able to enhance the properties, reposition the properties. But if you don't have that, obviously you should have things that you stand for, you know, things that you do that separate you from other people that you really want them to understand. You know, so for us, like it's about the world-class standards and I'll talk them through all the different things we do with world-class standards that I don't think anybody can touch us with. And then I'll back it up with like different pictures, right? Pictures of things that we've done um, that really show them world-class standards or unparalleled experience. You know, I'll talk to them about the fact that most management companies don't even answer the phone and we answer the phone on the second ring 99% of the time. We focus on speed is life at this company. So while a lot of people take months to be able to fix something like a, a certain service request for a broken garbage disposal, for us, we're doing it 97% of the time within 48 hours. Now we're focused on doing it in 24 hours. So within each one of the things that our company is focused on or I'm focusing on or that I stand for, I want to share that with the lender. I want to share how we do it and how we're pushing those things. So just take some time and slow down and tell the lender, you know, what you do and how you operate that is different than they might have not heard before. You know, and then I get into how we're going to create value together. So I have this small page on, you know, what I've done with other lenders and what I hope to do with this lender. I like to then take them through my book of work, which is a, fi a property financial breakdown for every single property I've owned, right? And every single year I've owned it. You know, sometimes when I'm helping out other real estate investors, I hear like, oh man, like didn't do good at this or didn't have a good year at this property. And they want to hide that from their lenders. My best advice is you don't hide anything. You beat the lender to something that's going bad because if you beat the lender, first of all, you earn their trust. So be transparent. Secondly, you probably have time to prepare and now you have a plan. Lenders know that mistakes happen. So acknowledge the mistake before they've even saw it. Be transparent and share it with them. And then more importantly, share with them the plan to correct that mistake and how it's not gonna happen again. That's why I share every property that I've owned every year and every financial aspect or number. Not all of those are great. I've made mistakes before. 
but I can talk through those mistakes and how I've learned. I can show them the trends. I can show them how successful I've been on every single property over time. So I think that's a key aspect. Don't hide anything from your lender. Get up in front of it and show them your book of work. The last thing I want to touch on is after you get done and now you've shared with them what you've done, you've given them the financials, you work through your global, you even told them about the next 10 years and how you're going to accomplish the things you're going to accomplish and, and how you're going to stand differently. You've even given the underwriters everything that they need. Some people joke I even have my blood type in this financial packet. Now it's your turn to ask the lender. Here's what I do. Here's how I want to get into deals. Here's how I want to refinance deals. Here's how you want to exit the deals or hold them forever. I would love to know what you can do for me. What are what is a typical term for you look like? What is your amortization rate? You know, what can you what can you do when it comes to turns? Every lender I've realized can do things that a different lender can't do. They have a certain set of criteria that they're comfortable with and they're not comfortable with. It is your job now to understand what they're willing to be able to do for you as an investor and what they're not willing to do for you as an investor. So, that the time that you get the next deal you can look at all the lenders you sat down with and you can look, oh, this lender will only do a 25 year amortization, but I'm really with this deal looking for a 30. So now you look, now you cross off that lender and then you move on to the next thing, right? This lender has typically really good rates or low fees or is willing to do IO or is not willing to do IO. You want to capture all this information, guys, because then when the deal comes up, you can look at an array of different lenders and then you can send the top three that meet that deal's criteria or terms that you're looking for. And then those three will send you back the terms and then you can solidify it. But it saves you a ton of time. It also helps them. Last key point of advice here is after you do a deal with a lender, and even if you don't, you should have touch points. Touch points are, hey, I haven't done a deal with you. How are you doing, right? Remember back to something about that lender from the initial time you started talking to them and just touch base with them. That's keeping the lenders you haven't done business with warm. The lenders that you are doing business with, you want to give them information on any deal that you've recently done. So when I acquire a deal, I am giving them financials on a quarterly basis without them asking. I'm sharing with them how much money I'm sticking into the property of my own money for CapEx, or I'm sharing with them how I'm increasing renewals or new lease ups sharing with them how the rent row is moving in the right direction or how the NOI is moving in the right direction. And I'm doing that every 90 days for the whole first year. Then after the first year or the first two years when it's done, it's stabilized, you've refied the asset, it's more stabilized, then you can do it on a semi-annually or annually basis, but you should have some sort of routine to keep the lender updated, especially if they're new.